Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete episode 2 of our RimWorld adventure in the tropical rainforest with the Believers of Boyo. Last time we left off, after establishing the charitable ideology, the Believers of Boyo, around our five starting colonists, took Light, Squigs, Kevin and Wyatt. After parting ways with the Cult of Jinx, they have now found a new home in the jungle. At the moment, they are occupying a small cave as a temporary shelter, but of course we have much grander plans for them. Last episode's first forays into charity then were somewhat unsuccessful, I would say. But who knows, maybe we'll get another chance to redeem ourselves here today. To get us started at least, we'll continue to plant more heal root. I think if we want to help others, a steady supply of medicine is one of the most important things to have. But we are also doing some other plant work in the form of harvesting some berries. And a short while later, we can watch Took make some pemmican. This is the big downside of hunting large animals like rhinos. They produce much more meat than your colonists can eat before it spoils. So we mix it with berries to turn it into pemmican, which will stay fresh for about a year. In the evening then, all heel root has been planted and Wyatt has also finished making his first batch of rhinoceros leather shirts. And so at this point, I think it's time that we start talking about research again. In the last episode, I asked you guys what you would like to see us research first. And the two options I had in mind were electricity and drug production. However, there was one other suggestion that I saw numerous times in the comments that I really liked, and I think it's the one we're going with, we are going to research cocoa trees. After all, is there really anything more charitable than gifting other people chocolate? I don't think there is, and the project is actually also quick to complete, so let's get it out of the way first, plant some cocoa trees, and while they're growing we can take care of the rest. On the following morning then, we're chopping some more wood, and a short while later, Squix is putting up a few more chairs at the table, while Kevin takes a short break from research to make a first step towards a more sustainable food production. I don't think the meat supply will ever become a huge issue for us, so we are planting some rice now, so that we always have means to either turn some spare meat into pemmican, or to perhaps even make the switch to fine meals. Although I'm not entirely sure how fitting fine meals would be for an ideology that considers itself guilty, perhaps we better save those for our guests in need. In the late afternoon then, all rice has been planted and it's time to assign our first role. Once again, there were a lot of great comments regarding colony leadership, but that is not what we're deciding here today. Instead, we are assigning the role of Speaker of Sacrifice. This will be our moral guide and the role will fall to Kevin. Compared to Colony Leader, this was a rather easy choice, I think, as this role benefits immensely from having someone with a good social skill and Kevin is by far the best in that regard. Not to mention that his previous occupation as a medical specialist definitely has some overlap with a desire to help others, so I think it makes some sense from a storyline perspective as well. Assigning this role then also finally removes the small mood penalty that all five colonists had up until this point. However, it does come at the cost of increasing Kevin's expectations by two levels. Thankfully though, we have two days to prepare for that, but by then we should probably at least take care of his bedroom, just so his mood does not dip too low. Before we can get to that, however, we have a combat supplier trade caravan arrive. Looks like the jungle is a bit more frequented by traders than the swamp was, and shortly after an eclipse sets in, the caravan arrives at our front door, so let's see what they have to trade. Unfortunately, it's not much, so we're just purchasing some medicine here. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I think you can never have enough of it. On the next morning then, it is still dark, thanks to the eclipse, and that will make our plans for Took a little bit more difficult. We'll get to those in a second, but first we can watch Squigs begin the construction of a large nature shrine, just so that our nature-focused psycasters have some place to meditate at too. Took, meanwhile, is going rhinoceros hunting again, this time with the sniper rifle and all on his own. Long-range single-shot weapons like the sniper rifle are actually perfect for this task. They have the lowest chance of turning an animal manhunter, just because the shooter is so far away. And thanks to Took's tremendous shooting skills, two shots are all it takes, the second one piercing the rhino's brain and still somehow not killing it, but Took can quickly put the animal out of its misery, and with that we have more meats and more rhinoceros leather coming in for Wyatt to continue crafting. We are then also informed that Squigs has entered the second trimester of her pregnancy. The effects of that will now be a bit more noticeable with penalties to moving, manipulation and hunger rate, but still she has no trouble finishing the nature shrine. And with that we now actually have a meditation object that is more powerful than the anima tree. You can see it here, a meditation psi focus bonus of 30% per day, 2% higher than the anima tree's 28. 
So as Wyatt immediately runs over to the new shrine to meditate, Squeaks begins smoothing out one of our larger bedrooms, and we'll also have her build some end tables here, just to increase our colonists' comfort levels a little bit. And speaking of comfort, one after another, our colonists are also switching out their cozy muffalo leather travel wear. We have entered the age of shirts and pants now, and made from rhinoceros leather, they will offer some good protection as well. Just around midnight then, we are informed yet another grizzly bear has joined us. Jason has given birth and grizzly bear number 8 will now go by the name of Marius, named after Patreon supporter Marius Cop. And as always, just as a quick side note, if you want to get your name into the series as well, then you can do so by joining the Pete Complete Patreon too. You can find links on screen and down below. Now, unfortunately, the joy about Marius' birth is short-lived, not because of Marius himself, who immediately goes to town on the local wildlife, but because of his brother Kate, who was not as successful in his fight against the boar. So, born in the last episode and already dead in this one, I'm sorry that your appearance in this series was short-lived. Probably should have picked his targets a little bit better, though. Either way, with that, our grizzly bear population is back down to seven. On the next morning then, the eclipse finally comes to an end and we have also mined out another small bedroom, just in case we need another room for guests, prisoners or medical patients. Squeaks, meanwhile, begins her day digging a grave for Kate. We will not have a grand funeral this time around, Kate was not with us that long after all, but already the jungle is claiming its sacrifices. So perhaps now is a good time to make sure that another source of danger does not come to fruition. We have another cave system over to the left side of our small base. It is once again inhabited by a few giant insects, so we are sending in our small pest control unit here to take care of the bugs. And the fact that all of them are swarming us immediately does not seem to concern Wyatt in the least. With his plasma sword Redhawk, he is decimating one spider after another, and shortly after, the cave is cleared. Wyatt himself took a few minor injuries as well, but nothing that Kevin can't fix. And in the meantime, Took is chopping up the bugs to produce insect meat. Maybe this will keep our bears from putting themselves into unnecessary danger for a few days. Jumping back over to Kevin then, we can see his low expectations are about to expire. As the Speaker of Sacrifice, he has now moved up to high expectations, a net mood penalty of 12 points. So let's try to compensate for that by assigning him Took's old bedroom. That one sporting at least a mediocre rating and the most comfortable bed in the colony too. While Took now moves into Kevin's old bedroom, hopefully he won't mind too much. And either way, this is all just temporary anyway. Wyatt, by the way, also sporting a small mood penalty here, as you can see. Yes, his Persona Plasma Sword unfortunately comes with the Kill Sorrow trait, so whenever he kills something, it will negatively affect his mood, which I think is actually a very interesting trade-off, because as we saw, Wyatt is incredibly effective with that sword in his hand. Now, on the next morning, Squeaks finishes the construction of one final armchair, and with that I think we are done with all of the necessary construction projects inside of our small shelter for now, which means we can already start working on acquiring a better place to live. And once again, there were some great ideas in the comments of the last episode, but to me it felt like the most popular choice was this section of the mountain down to the left over here. The caves and the underground river just make this one incredibly defensible, and it would definitely be a very unique place to build in. Now, whether or not it's going to be a pure mountain base or a hybrid with some outside buildings as well, that is not yet decided. For now, we'll begin by carving into the mountain from the back, but to make it a bit more accessible, we need a bridge first, and then we'll go from there. Although, as you know, mountain bases tend to take a while, so I think it will take us quite a while longer until we get to move in here. Back out in the jungle, meanwhile, Took has caught the unfortunate attention of a panther. In my opinion, getting rid of these predators is always a good idea. Unfortunately though, despite already suffering from a sniper rifle shot, the animal is still faster than our hunter. And so Took takes an injury before Wyatt can move in and stun the animal. And well, if you need more convincing that Wyatt is an absolute menace with the plasma sword, then here it is. Taking on a panther in one-on-one -on -one combat, no trouble for him. Our brawler does not take any injuries, and a few moments later we can add some more meat to our storage room. On the following morning then, perhaps a chance to finally get our charitable ways going. We receive a quest from a baron of the royal empire who would like to visit us for a few days, together with three of their court allies. And well, I suppose if that is what they want, then we will accommodate them. The rewards are nothing too crazy here, but still I think our colonists desperately want to prove themselves. Now, as you can see, we cannot accept this quest right away. First, we need to construct a bedroom that meets the Baron's requirements, and they are quite demanding, so let's get to work. 
Or rather, let's take care of our animals first, as four of them have unfortunately come down with the plague. Playing in the jungle, this was only a matter of time, and I'm hoping that the medical skills of Kevin will be enough to treat this without medicine. With animals, the plague is thankfully a bit more forgiving than it would be for humans. Still, we are putting up some proper animal beds here just to increase the immunity gain speed. Yes, it is still very much up in the air whether or not these bears are actually in our long-term plans, but at the moment at least the mature ones fill a very important role as haulers, so I would prefer not to lose them. A short while later then, while Took is hunting an elephant, we have an exotic goods trader arrive. And well, I know that I just said that I would prefer to keep our bears, but sometimes in this game you have to make tough decisions, and this right here is one of those situations. You see, these traders carry with them several very intriguing items. Unfortunately, we do not yet have the necessary devices to safely store gene packs, but that's not the only thing they're offering. We also have some skill trainers here as well as an Arcotech eye. And as much as I would love the idea of Light regaining his sight, that's just a bit too expensive at the moment. What is not too expensive, however, is the lung that they're selling. At least not if we offer them Grizzly Bear's Ball and Jacer in exchange. And yes, that is a hefty price to pay for a lung, and you might be wondering why we are purchasing it in the first place. And well, the simple answer is Squeaks right here, who had her lung destroyed quite some time ago. Combine that with the fact that Kevin currently benefits from a surgery inspiration, and I think this makes a lot of sense. Squeaks being forced to sell some of her bears and suffering a minus 10 mood penalty for the next 60 days, but in exchange receiving a brand new lung. Another harsh lesson that nothing in this world comes for free, and that in order to walk the way of Boyo, you have to be willing to make some sacrifices. In the evening then, we have a very curious appearance. A group of travelers is passing by, and among them, someone named Thoraya. And after taking a closer look at her, we can confirm, yes, this is in fact the Thoraya from our previous series. Now part of the Metazni kinship tribe, but still a staunch believer in the cult of Jinx. But at least it looks like her new faction allows her to live out her nudist ways. Now, unfortunately, there is really nothing we can do here to interact with her apart from attacking or imprisoning her. And as much as the idea of forced redemption intrigues me, I don't think that's something our people would do just yet. Not to mention that I would also like to see some new characters take the stage in this series. So we will let her pass by. Who knows, we might just meet her again sometime later. In the meantime, Kevin's new bedroom has been lit up to serve as our temporary operating room, and so Squeaks can lay down now as we use some of our precious medicine to install a new lung. And perhaps it is because of the disturbing news of his ex-girlfriend being cut up, but either way, Took goes on another food binge. Meanwhile, the operation itself thankfully goes smoothly, and so just for this night, Kevin and Squeaks will switch bedrooms, as Squeaks is in no place to be moved at the moment. On the next morning then, she is back up on her feet, and together with Wyatt, we can watch her mine out the last bits of rock from the new bedroom we have to construct. Wyatt, meanwhile, is already working on the one and only gold vein I found on the map, and we do need some gold, 50 units of it to be exact, to construct ourselves a royal bed. Before we put up some furniture though, we have good news, our first research project has been completed. We now possess the knowledge of planting cocoa trees, and since Light is the most skilled farmer in our colony, he will also get on that shortly. First of all though, he can chop some trees and then start working on drug production. This project alone, only a gateway to unlock panoxicillin, which we also cannot produce ourselves unless we acquire some nutriamine from somewhere. But I'd rather have these two projects unlocked and ready to go, than to stumble upon a big stockpile of the stuff and not knowing what to do with it. Our new royal bedroom then, coming along nicely as you can see. Took also finally stops his food binge now that we have run out of meals, so obviously his task for the next few hours will be making more. Squeaks meanwhile starts to work on the royal bed, which will be a rather lengthy construction process, so let's jump over to Wyatt and Light, who can already start working on clearing out the field where we eventually want to plant our cocoa trees. As you can see, I have already chosen a spot that is close to the mountain, just so we only have to go through this process once. I think this area around here would make for a good farmyard, that is, at least until we unlock hydroponics. In the early hours of the night then, we also receive some good news from our bears. It looks like the three infected ones that we did not sell off will all make it, but I dread the day that this infects our first humans, as it could very easily cripple our entire colony for several days. Now, on the following morning, as we send Took out on another hunting trip, we are informed of a mad rat, and just as it gets to our base, the elephant that we have been hunting also goes berserk. So first of all, we have our swordsman Wyatt put a quick end to the rat, and then we successfully lure the mad elephant back to our base, where it goes down to the combined firepower of light squicks and Took. 
Now, you might be wondering why we are hunting elephants now instead of rhinoceroses. The answer is simple, they give more leather, and we need 150 units of the same type of leather to construct a drape, as this is one of those requirements for the Baron's bedroom. And that bedroom, by the way, is coming along nicely with a good quality royal bed. Now, all that is left to do is close it off and hunt down another elephant for the remaining leather, which unfortunately turns into a small disaster, as this time around it is not only the hunted animal that goes manhunter, but a second one as well, and that one is still completely healthy and therefore faster than took. That means it is now time to assemble the entire squad and just by a miracle Took had enough of a head start to get away safely here. A last second skip from light gets him out of harm's way and at this point I think we should be able to outgun it. Just in that moment however Randy gifts us a medium intensity psychic drone and since this affects all males it is already bad enough for most of our colonists but it is absolutely excruciating for Psycaster Light who now suffers a minus 69 mood penalty and I have no idea if and how we're able to counter that. Still, for now we have two angry elephants to worry about, and you know what, why not have Wyatt go one on one with an elephant? Yes, he does get a bit of fire support from his allies, but ultimately it is Wyatt who lands the strike to down the animal. The other one then downed by Squigs and Light, and with that we should now have enough meat and leather for the foreseeable future, enough at least to finally construct that drape we have still been missing. Over by the cocoa plantation meanwhile, mood is certainly becoming an issue for our colonists. Kevin, Wyatt and Light are all in danger of mental breaks, and with Light being hit the hardest, I think he makes for the best target to use Wyatt's Word of Joy sidecast on. This now increases his mood by a whopping 30 points, and still that is not enough to cancel out even half of the drone's effects. It is Wyatt himself then who suffers the mental break first, and it is an uncomfortable one. Wyatt will now go about the base smashing stuff, and well, as we have seen in this video, he is pretty good at that, so this might just cause a fair bit of destruction. And to make matters worse, Light follows suit shortly after. He will only wander around in a daze, but as you might know, those can last for some time. Let's hope he does not get himself into harm's way. And no, we will not interrupt any of these mental breaks by imprisoning anyone. I think the plus 40 catharsis mood bonus the two of them get afterwards is very much worth it, especially since we do not know for how long this drone is going to last. Eventually then, around midnight, Wyatt calms down again, leaving behind a path of destruction. We did unfortunately lose our tailoring bench, as well as Wyatt's bed, so just for tonight he will sleep in the royal bed, while Light is still wandering around in the darkness of the jungle. On the next morning then, Light's mental break has still not subsided, but at least our base looks presentable again, as we now begin the last bit of preparation for the Baron's bedroom. The place still needs to be floored and we are going as simple as we can with a wooden floor. Thankfully the Baron has no fancy demands in this regard. The arrival of a solar flare can then thankfully be ignored as long as we do not have electricity. As we watch Squigs install the last few floorboards and with that we are now ready. As you can see we have everything we need to accept this quest. And I would like to ask you, which reward would you like to see us pick? Obviously we are still far away from ever having a use for advanced components, but then again we might always be able to sell those. Alternatively a psychic insanity lance could come in handy, even though it does fill a similar role as the berserk psych has and light actually has the berserk pulse version. So perhaps we might just go for the honor and start ranking up with the empire, and in that case the question would obviously be who to give it to. Now that is something I would like to know from you guys. In the meantime, good news, the psychic drone is ending, and so the danger of suffering another mental break with Kevin is hopefully over soon too. As you can see, our cocoa farm is also coming along nicely, although in the evening we switch from planting to harvesting, as we are ready to bring in our first batch of rice. That also means that we will be able to feed our noble guests fine meals, and apparently another thing that's going to happen soon is the birth of Squix's baby, as she now progresses into the third trimester, so we might already want to plan for a birth room and a nursery, but I think we're going to do that in the next episode. For today we wrap things up with our first rice field completely harvested. Just as we get ready to make the cut here, Light's mental break then also finally wears off, and so next time we'll hopefully be able to show our most hospitable side, and unless anything goes terribly wrong, we will also have our first baby. Now before we completely make the cut in today's episode, there is one more thing that I'm very happy to announce has made a return. Yes, we finally have some fan art again. So a big thank you goes out to Matt, Doggo Doggy, Tony Murchison and Wozy. And full disclosure, Matt's piece was AI generated, but I still included it because I think it captures the vibe of the jungle quite nicely. 
So enjoy some fantastic artwork as we wrap things up for today. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And as always, if you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can of course subscribe to stay up to date and get notified when the next video goes up, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com or get your name into the series too by supporting me over on Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.